Written and illustrated by David Manctolo. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in a place called Wonderland, there lived a very friendly lion called Ferdinand. Now Ferdinand lived in a little tree house at the base of a big horse chestnut tree in the middle of the jungle. The house had a door with a letterbox and nailed above it a sign saying Ferdinand. One day, after he had washed, made his bed, had a breakfast of orange juice, cornflakes, bacon and egg and toast and marmalade, washed the dishes and cleaned his teeth, he sat down in the sun outside to wait for the postman. He should have been happy, but he felt like children do at the end of a long school holiday. He had nothing to do. He thought of what he would have for lunch. Spaghetti and tomato sauce on toast, perhaps. Then ice cream with chocolate sauce with a big fat red cherry on top. He licked his lips, he thought. But after he had decided on his lunch, there didn't seem anything left for him to think about. Oh dear, he was so bored. Time passed and still no postman came. No letters today, he signed. Oh dear, what shall I do? Oh well, I suppose I might as well go for a walk, he said to himself, because even lions sometimes talk to themselves. He set off along the jungle paths, hoping to meet some of his friends. After all, Jerry the giraffe, Harry the hippo and Ellie the elephant must be somewhere around on a nice day like this. It was a warm day, the sun was shining and the butterflies were everywhere. He walked on and on along some paths he'd never seen before, on and on through the jungle, until he began to feel quite tired. Then suddenly he found himself on the edge of the jungle. Well, he'd never seen anything like this before. In fact, he never knew there was an edge to the jungle, for he thought the world was a big flat jungle full of trees, rivers, lakes and animals. You see, Ferdinand had never been to school. He'd heard about people, but wasn't quite sure where they lived. And now he knew, for a little way down the hill stood a house. It was a lot bigger than Ferdinand's, though not as nice. It was all square with sharp edges, but he liked the roof. It was a beautiful red colour. I wonder who lives here, he thought. I must go down there and see. He ran down the slope and peered in through the window. Inside was a man, and what an unusual creature he was with his blue skin and black feet. He was painting one more blue with a big brush, and on the floor were lots and lots of tins of paint. Yellow, red, blue, green, and white, he read. Hmm, what super colours. I wish I had some of that paint for my house. How beautiful I could make it. He closed his eyes and imagined his room shining with bright new paint. He moved his foot to the grass and kicked his toe against something. Ouch, he muttered painfully. He looked down and there, outside the house, was a pile of tins of paint that the man had left. His eyes lit up with delight. Perhaps he doesn't need them, he told himself, knowing that of course the man did really want them. Ferdinand quickly scooped up three tins, tucked them under his arm and crept carefully away on the tip of his toes. Once he was out of sight of the man, he ran up the hill as fast as he could, glancing over his shoulder to see if the man was chasing him. People who take things like that always get into trouble. And sure enough, Ferdinand tripped fell and tumbled over and over as he rolled down the hill, pink tins flying in all directions. One tin hit him on the head, and ow, how it hurt. With a tremendous crash of splintering glass and wood, he hurtled through the window of the house to fall in a clattering heap amongst all those tins of paint. Coloured paint splashed everywhere, over the walls, the floor, and of course, all over the man. The man was furious. He swung around in a towering rage. Paint trickled down through Ferdinand's coat 
and dripped off his mane in big globby lumps. He looked up apprehensively at the man who was speechless with fury. The man ground his teeth on his pipe stem. All his work was wasted and this lion had made such a mess that it would take him days to clean it up. With a loud snap he bit through his pipe stem. His favourite pipe it was too. He lunged out to grab Ferdinand but Ferdinand was off. With a slippery, sloppy leap, he was out of the window, scattering and spilling tins of paint everywhere. My, how Ferdinand ran! He ran like the wind up the hill, while the man angrily hurled tin after tin of paint at him. And what a mess Ferdinand was! There was hardly a single hair of his coat that wasn't covered in sticky paint. He didn't stop running until he finally reached his house, where he collapsed, panting on the floor. He was ever so puffed. With shaking legs and pounding heart, he tottered over to the mirror, and what a sight he saw. Only his eyes were not smothered in sticky, gluey paint. With a cry of horror, he ran to run a steaming hot bath, dripping paint on the floor as he did so. He filled the bath right up with piping hot water, then jumped in with a bottle of shampoo. He rubbed and scrubbed with the shampoo until huge piles of foaming bubbles filled the bathroom. But the paint was waterproof and it just wouldn't come off, no matter how hard he rubbed. He shampooed himself again and again until the bottle was empty, but the paint still didn't shift. Oh dear! What an unhappy lion I am, thought Ferdinand miserably. Everyone will laugh at me with all this mess over me. What am I going to do? He stood dripping in the bathroom, and a very sorry sight he was too. He rubbed himself with his towel, then, with his hairdryer, started to dry himself in front of the mirror. Oh, what an awful sight I look, he said to himself. Awful! Oh dear! Then suddenly, Ferdinand, who was a little vain, realised that in fact the colours were rather nice. The more he looked at the brilliant colours, the more he liked them. Hmm, he said after a short while. After all, not every lion is the colour of the rainbow. It's better than just dull old brown. He turned his head this way and that, admiring the glorious colours. People will certainly notice me now, he thought, as he stood proudly in front of the mirror, his coat glistening with the new paint. So today, Ferdinand is a very special lion, for his colours never faded, and now he is the only lion in Wonderland that isn't ordinary old brown.